Hey guys, so today we have the extremely beautiful, yet very tiny, uh, IBM ThinkPad 701. Um, the problem with this unit here is that uh, the audio doesn't work. Um, I'm, it's the first time of, that I'm dealing with a ThinkPad. I usually fix Apple laptops, but uh, I decided to, go, to get this one here because... Uh, well, because it was too cool, I guess. I, I love this uh, this keyboard here, which I think it's called the Track Right keyboard. Um, but this unit here suffered some very mild, actually, uh, corrosion from the battery. And uh, we have issues with the audio, which it does have some sense since the audio connectors are right here and all the battery sits in here. So we're going to take it apart and uh, see if we, can, uh, if we can fix it. I've already took it apart recently because I replaced the internal battery so it, it can keep the time and it doesn't complain at every startup. But uh, today I'm going to open it again. So uh, I guess let's go. I'm not following a uh, manual because it's pretty much impossible to understand. You have to go back and forth through all those images. So. I'm actually doing this by memory, and I, f I don't recommend doing that. <laughs> I actually, okay, forgot the screw tray. I don't recommend doing that because it's pretty much impossible to find replacement parts for this uh, computer here. So let's hope we don't break it. It's also this this rubber stuff. It's starting to get uh, very sticky. And uh, okay, we got the first bit off quite easily, so you can start to see the uh, the rails where the keyboard slides into, which is kind of nice. The old levers, and uh, the, this is the spring, which gets pushed by the. Um, by this little plastic bit here to close the keyboard down. It's actually a very intelligent system. Uh, so, what's next? Uh, we need to remove this screw here. There's a screw under the... under here. Which needs to be removed. And then we got some screws on the bottom and we should be able to separate the, um, the keyboard from the rest of the system. So, I think I need to remove all of them. Not quite sure, they are different lengths, so I recommend you store them in uh, different places. So all these three here, these three here are the same. This one here is longer than this one, if I recall correctly. All right. Next, we need to open up this little cover here because we have a couple of clips inside. And we also have some clips on this side here, but on my machine are already broken, so I don't need to deal with them. So I'm going to open it again. Oh, almost forgot. I also need to remove the uh, 4T1 Torx uh, screws on the front. Which are fairly tiny. I don't even know why they, they decide to go with T1, like if there's a reason behind that or not, because I'm probably going to lose them. They're so tiny. Alright. In fact, I just lost one. Oh, no, there it is. All right, so I can pop it open again. And we can start detaching the front. There are some clips around here. Oh, I forgot to remove the hard drive. Whoops. That needs to be removed first. It's actually easy to do it while the machine is closed. Okay, so this is the hard drive. It's quite a nice uh, little unit with uh, a um, PCMCIA style connector on it. Not sure if the pinout is the same, but uh, why not? 
Okay. I'm trying to be very gentle with it since I don't want to break it again. And because replacement parts are pretty much impossible to find. So I'm going to remove the two clips. Come on. It doesn't really want to cooperate, doesn't it? Okay. And now we have... I think that this thing should slide. Now that I look at uh, how it's made. Yes. So you should move it on the front and then just slide it towards you. Towards up. Like this. That has a lot more sense, actually. Now we need to remove... Uh, four cables. So we got one for the track point and two for the keyboard. There. Come on. I'm probably destroying this machine. Yeah, I broke another clip. Whoops. Well, I guess you learn. I can. Well, I can glue it back. I guess. You learn something new every time. Uh, last time I opened it, it was, uh, well, it decided to cooperate, so it didn't really break too much stuff. Okay, so I got the keyboard off. So this is the keyboard, we got this little plastic cover, and all the mechanism is housed in here. So you can see all the, this silver metal plate that guides the keyboard through the rails inside, which is a... Uh, Definitely very neat. Um, so we are left with the. Um, so I can barely stay. I need to find something heavy to hold it. <laughs> so we have the uh, inverter, which is right here. We also have the main logic board, and we have this secondary, uh, we could call it the IO board here. This is where the uh, battery control circuitry is. You can see there's a lot of corrosion around here. Actually, I don't think you can see that. There's a lot of corrosion around here. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't think that I need to remove the display. I'm not so sure, but I don't really want to do it. It's, it's a bit of a pain. Those cables are quite annoying. So I'm just going to disconnect the microphone and speaker. And uh, we're going to remove this board here next, which uh, should only be a press fit. Because there's a connector right here, where these two little uh, plastic bits are. There's a connector that uh, joins the two boards together. And I think that's the only thing that we need to remove. Maybe there was a screw somewhere, but I just cannot recall if it's, it, that's true or not and where it is. So I also need to remove the cabling for the um, backlight. So I need to remove this one here so I can lift the backlight unit. So this is also the cable for the microphone. And this is the cable for the speaker that we don't need. So it looks like it's coming off, which is a good thing. I would love to know if I could remove it without taking out the display, because I don't really want to do that. I also don't really want to destroy it while it's flexing quite a bit. The... come on. So... Yeah, watch me damage this beautiful ThinkPad. It was working, apart from the audio, so I'm probably going to break it even more right now because it's not really cooperating too much so let me just see if I can remove the inverter yes oh that is so tight got the inverter out I'm not following the manual I really am not but uh, we got it out so this is the rest of the board this is the interconnect thing that joins the two and uh, I didn't have to remove the display for now, because I'm probably need I probably need to remove it when uh, when I have to put this thing back in. So um, let me have a look at it. Fast forward a couple of days, and thanks to the magic of video editing, here's the ThinkPad back in one piece. 
Unfortunately, I wasn't able to completely solve the uh, missing audio issue. I was able to partially fix the problem, so now the, the system beeps, uh, I can now hear them through the internal speaker, but not the uh, computer audio. So when I run it in DOS mode with a DOS game, with without audio drivers, uh, the audio works fine, the, the tones, <laughs> so to say. But if I want to get real audio coming through it, unfortunately, we still have problems. And it only works if I get a, a, a headphone jack inside the, the speaker output uh, and I insert it halfway through. Uh, after that, now the speaker will start working again. So I think there is still uh, another broken trace that needs to be fixed. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to locate it. I do have a couple of ideas of what it, what could it be, but unfortunately I don't have the time to spend on this uh, lovely machine, but I'll definitely come back to it. So until then, thanks for watching.